Thank you, Kevin. Uh, excited to speak with all of you today. So real quick, uh, my name is Gavin McDonald. I'm the uh, director of sales over at Guild Quality. And today I'm gonna talk to you guys about the reputation economy. Uh, essentially, what, uh, what you can ensure your position for for success. You know, this is something that's really important right now, especially given our current climate with COVID and, you know, kind of the up and down economic climate as well. So I wanna lay just a, a quick agenda of what I will be covering today. So to start, we're gonna examine what exactly I mean when I say the reputation economy and how exactly you and your business can thrive in it. Next, we're gonna discuss how to strengthen your online reputation. Something that's absolutely key to your ability to Thrive, And then finally, we're going to wrap up with a couple of immediate impacts that you can actually take away today that will uh, throw out some immediate successes for your business. So, you know, before we get in there, obviously, you know, we've got to start with definitions. What do I mean when I say reputation economy? Well, whether you realize it or not, you're actually already operating in the reputation economy. What I mean by this is businesses and consumers alike have become more tech savvy, more tuned into the internet, whether it's to promote their products or services or to determine which businesses they'd like to work with. As a result, your online reputation is now an integral part of doing business no matter what you're selling or more importantly, where you're selling that. And, and I want you to you know, kind of stick on that word for a, a second, where, because I know one of the big things that has affected a lot of people throughout COVID is being able to adapt to stuff like virtual selling. So your reputation economy and this online reputation management really plays a big part in, uh, in, in that. All right. A couple big uh, stats right here. So according to HubSpot, 80% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. So people still may ask their neighbor about their favorite contractor. They're still going to rely heavily on the opinions of total strangers out on the internet. The other thing at play here is that the marketing playing field is actually flattened. The internet provides a relatively inexpensive way to spread your brand and your messaging. And entire businesses are built on the backs of just simple stuff like SEO and paid search. Now, whether or not these are good or, or reputable or, or the best of the best businesses, maybe it's kind of hard to tell. But that's why customer reviews and customer feedback are becoming more important to consumers when making buying decisions, all right? So customer feedback provides that trusted opinion that validates whether the claim of, I may be the best contractor in my area is true or just you know some marketing spin. And really where the, uh, where the rubber meets the road, as I say, is that picture that is painted online really needs to match the reality of the customer experience. That's another term you guys are gonna hear me say a couple of times over and over because at the end of the day, all of this encapsulates the customer experience and those contractors that can really tie into the idea of being customer centric and customer first, those are the ones that ultimately always thrive, all right? So um, going back to the study here, the Forum Corporation uh, also contributed this, produced a study that if, if presented, two companies identical in every way, except for the level of customer service off, uh, offered, homeowners would choose to work with a company that provides better service. Look, that's not brain surgery. Uh, if I have option A and option B, and I know option A is gonna provide me better customer service, of course I'm going in that direction. But what that study also showed is that 40% of those consumers would be willing to either switch to another company or even pay more if they were guaranteed that better customer service, all right? So when we think about it in that context is customers are willing to pay more if they have more of a guarantee that they are gonna be taken care of, if that customer experience is top of mind. So to recap, you know, it's kind of like, what's old is new again? Reputation matters, but the landscape's a little different. So your reputation has to be visible online where these buying decisions are actually made. Okay, so when we recap here, the reputation of economy is an environment where the success of a company relies heavily on how they are perceived online. Uh, as Sir Richard Branson, founder of Virgin Group says, your brand is only as good as your reputation. Reputation is a key driver for trusted traits. Having said that, Maintaining a positive reputation, more importantly, a positive reputation that's primed for profit, is equally as important 
but it's often a little more of a challenge. So we're going to dive into that here in a few. But before we get into that, look, obviously the, the world's been flipped upside down uh, with, you know, the, the recent COVID-19 outbreak. And I, and I want to share some findings. So uh, to get a sense of how exactly the public health crisis has been impacting the residential construction industry, we here at Guild Quality actually surveyed over 7,000 different contractors back in March, and then we surveyed them once again uh, recently in May. So when we asked the question of, you know, how, how is 91% of respondents of the first uh, survey, the one that was sent back in March, believe that they were being negatively affected. Now, fast forward to May, the number actually dropped a little bit to only 86%. So still high, but starting to trend towards the right direction. Now, when you look more closely at some of the data here, you're going to notice some more positive shifts. So again, back in March, 51% of people initially reported they were going to experience a significant negative impact due to COVID-19. When resurveyed in May, that number dropped about 20 points uh, down to only 31%. So over the course of just two months, we went from over half of the contractors that we suffered thinking this is really significantly going to hurt them to less than a third. A lot of big improvement over just the course of about 60 days here. Now, there's also an increase that we've seen too of those contractors who actually view this as a positive. That's actually up 8%, as you can see in the graph uh, in front of you. Now, unfortunately, there's still about 37% of contractors out there who do feel like they are going to experience these effects uh, much uh, beyond the rest of 2020, you know, beyond six months. But keep in mind, when we did that survey back in March, that number was hovering nearly three-fourths or 75%. So the long story short here is we are trending in the right direction. Uh, to take it a little bit further, you know, we obviously asked how they're feeling impacted, and then we asked to, to get a little bit more uh, a little bit more granular. What does that mean? What does impact actually mean for a contracting business? So when we asked them that, they said, well, it's affecting us in a number of different ways. The most popular ones were to be running fewer leads and having fewer calls to my office. I'm going to ultimately have fewer sales. I'm going to have an increase in project cancellations. However, results from the second survey actually showed a significant improvement in each one of those areas. And it should be noted that a lot of uh, companies are actually seeing an increase in sales uh, for you know, this month compared to last year, as well as an increase of leads as what people starting to, uh, depending on where you live, be uh, migrated out of certain COVID restrictions and things like that. All right, so, so, so why this impact, all right? So, so why is the industry really going through so much multiple times? And, and again, none of this should be shocking to anybody, but I will uh, reiterate it. Number one, homeowner fear and uncertainty. Uh, these are unprecedented times. Many Americans have never experienced a situation like the one we are in, and they're being more cautious when it comes to, to spending money and staying safe. Look, Guild Quality also talks to tens of thousands of homeowners each and every week, and a lot of our members are actually asking us to ask them how they feel about this situation. And I got to share something with everybody. Many, many homeowners think that the days of calling multiple contractors to get multiple bids are gone, all right? People are more cautious with who they are going to allow into their home. They're more selective. They wanna prioritize health and safety over everything else. So this all ties into the importance of having that digital presence, that online reputation, which moves me into the second point, the remote workforce. And um, you know, depending on where you live, a lot of non-essential employees are being required to work from home. I'm doing this meeting right now from my office here in Atlanta, Georgia, or my home office here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and it, but this sort of uh, you know adapt to work from home uh, requires major adjustments for both employees and employers. All right. And when we talk about doing virtual selling, we have to rise to that challenge. If we have customers who are going to want to be sold remotely, do we have the right environment, and are we fostering the right sort of company culture in order to do that? All right. And the last big impact here is going to be the, the government regulations. Uh, I know a lot of them are starting to lift, but you know, some people are at different stages of uh, you know, restrictions lifting than others. All again, dependent on where you live, but still having a major impact as we uh, navigate through the summer here. All right, so we kind of defined you know, what the reputation economy is, 
what have we already learned about how homeowners are perceiving COVID? Uh, and now we're gonna talk about how can we strengthen that online reputation, all right? So um, we're all doing this, you know, from the, the, the comforts of being in front of our computer, whether at the office or at home. So I'm gonna challenge everybody, if you're willing to, go ahead and just open up a, another browser tab. Um, you know, we'll take five seconds and just pop it open. And what I want you to do is I want you to actually Google your business and tell me what you see. Or maybe don't tell me, you can type it in the chat, but <laughs> we've got a handful of people here. All right, but hopefully you've done this. Uh, maybe you're seeing an, an, an ad for your company. Chance you're seeing an ad for a competitor, maybe somebody who bought a, a PPC link using your company name in there. Uh, maybe you see the, the Google My Business listing, that you know box in the far right-hand side, seeing customer reviews, maybe stuff from Howes, Better Business Bureau, Ideally, maybe you're seeing some guild quality stuff in there too, but all of this stuff that you're seeing on this little screenshot of when you Google your business, this is what compromises your online reputation. So this is your first introduction to all prospective customers because they are all looking you up online. So this right here is your brand. Let's build off that from here, all right? So according to Bright Mobile, all consumers, regardless of age group, are doing online research before ever reaching out to you. 86% of consumers say that they actively do research online and read reviews for local businesses before making a buying decision. All right, guess what? This number is even higher when we narrow it down to that targeted 18 to 34 year old demographic. 95% of this segment is looking online uh, before making uh, you know, buying decisions. This represents the next generation of homeowners. This is how they want to do business. So how do you cover that whole page of search results that we all just did together so that your prospective customer sees what you want them to see? Well, a couple of things that we can do. Build out that Google business page, all right? Make sure that our website is optimized for search, all right? Claim and flesh out popular profiles. Um, sites like Yelp and Angie's List and House all might already have profiles for your business and that you aren't aware of them, but you have the ability to claim them. If you're not already, get on social media, get on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, all of these different places are different avenues where prospective customers are gonna be looking for you. And last, but certainly not least, Give your customers a way to provide feedback on their experience with your company. Proactively ask them for it and, and do what you can to make it easy. Why is gathering customer feedback from every job so important? Because of this alarming stat, only 25% of customers will speak up when they have an issue. All right, so if you're running 10 projects, four of them have a, a problem arise, only one person is gonna to call to your office to tell you about that issue, all right? This is why it's so important to have a proactive approach. The best way to prevent problems is to get in front of them before they snowball into something larger. People by nature are, are conflict avoiders, so this is why problems often fall between the cracks and you don't hear about it until after you've left the job site and they left you a bad review online. All right. In fact, if you are not proactive in this approach to gathering customer feedback, you're only going to hear from the extreme cases, the very, very, very happy customers, the people that you went the extra mile for who are always going to give you a five star review <clears throat> and the very, very upset customers. And those are those people that are leaving you those one and two star reviews. All right. When you only hear from the two extremes, you're not getting a sense of the, your true reality. The true customer experience that most of your customers are going through is somewhere in the middle of those very happy and very distraught customers. Bottom line, I highly encourage everybody to consider a systemized automatic like, process for gathering customer feedback. And some of you might be thinking, you know, why would I want to poke a sleeping bear if we're going to ask for feedback? What happens if we get it? And more importantly, what happens if it's bad? I don't want any negative reviews. But if there's really one key thing that I want everybody to embrace right now, not all negative reviews are bad. 
actually studies show that receiving the occasional negative review can actually help your business. Take this down. This is the true game changer of everything that I'm going to talk about here. Here's why negative reviews can actually help your business. Number one, negative reviews show authenticity. We're in a time where reviews are considered so necessary to do commerce that people are going to extreme lengths, maybe buying fake reviews or asking their friends to pose as customers or try to review gate by only soliciting po um, positive reviews. Keep in mind, <clears throat> there is a term for it. It's called review gating. When you are only proactively looking for four and five star reviews and a site like Google gets wind of it, guess what? That is against their terms of service. If they find out about it, it's within their rights to take down all of your reviews. So you have to be careful of practices like that, okay? On top of that too, it, it's really easy for a consumer to spot um, you know, some, some fishy behavior going on when you've got 10 reviews on a page that have the exact same tone and focus and look the exact same. This is why 85% of customers are actually searching for negative reviews when they're doing their online research. So if we know that most of our people are looking for, um, you know, just general feedback about my company online, we know that almost nine out of 10 of those people are actually going to be specifically targeting the negative stuff out there. So when you happen to get a negative review, there's some stuff you can do to, to um, you know, pop up the, your brand out there. Publicly respond to it. Go further. Go demonstrate that not only are you authentic in what you're providing over on the internet, but you understand and your future customers understand that you're human. Mistakes happen, but you're showing that you're going to address problems that come up because, again, you value the customer experience more so than anything else. All right. And last but not least here, these uh, negative reviews can be golden nuggets for your business. Use them as an opportunity to improve, embrace it, learn from it, share it with your team, because the only way that you get better is to get um, some you know, constructive criticism. And at the end of the day, we all want to, as I tell, told Kevin earlier today, we want to focus on growing profits and decreasing headaches. Okay, now, when I talk about responding to a negative reviews, there's a couple different ways of going about it, all right? So there's the good way and then the, the not so good way. This is the not so good way. And these are actual reviews that I've pulled from the web of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, people publicly responding to a negative review. So here are the do nots when it comes to responding to a review out there. All right, don't get into it back and forth. No, he said, she said, no name calling. Uh, basically, if you wouldn't say this to, you know, like in front of your grandmother, don't put it out on the internet, all right? Instead, what we need to do, you need to be empathetic, you need to be kind, you need to be polite, you need to be non-defensive no matter what. You wanna create a, a happy fan who had a negative experience. What you wanna do is you want to attempt to solve the problem. I'm not saying you're gonna go and solve the problem, but you're gonna be publicly facing, attempting to solve the problem. You're going to assure your client that you're gonna do everything you can to rectify the situation. Why does that matter? Because those 86% of people looking for those negative reviews are gonna see that you address the needs of customers, even the ones that are not happy because you're a customer-centric business focused on that customer experience. All right, now another just key stat here, guys, prospective clients who read online reviews uh, and responses to online reviews are actually 87% more likely to buy. Told you before, negative reviews can be a golden nugget if used properly. Take the time, respond to reviews. If I'm you, I'm responding to all my reviews, good, bad, or indifferent. Because if I know that I have increased my likelihood of uh, getting a prospect to call my office by almost 90%, yeah, I'm doing that every time. All right, now, okay, reviews are great. Online feedback is great, but you're probably saying, Gavin, the end game here is winning business, all right? The number one thing that you can do is incorporate feedback into your sales process. How do we wanna take this sort of ideology and flip it to close more deals? Well, the first time you speak with a uh, prospective customer, ask them if they've looked at your website and read your reviews because you've put a lot of time and energy to cultivating that online brand out there. This immediately gives them 
social proof that you're performing as well uh, to, to the commitments that you've laid out during the entire sales process, that you're here to solve problems and deliver the highest level of customer satisfaction. Plus, it also tells them you know, you're proud of your accomplishments and you also take ownerships of your mistakes. All right. You don't have anything to hide. Yeah, I have 900 five star reviews and I have 50 one star reviews and I own each and every one of them. OK, this provides, again, more authenticity to that sales process. So taking it you know, one step further, um, I challenge people. Like literally bring printouts of either reviews or customer feedback and bring that to the meetings with your, your potential customers. Um, I'm sure many of the people on this call have equipped their salespeople with um, you know, iPads or, or tablets of some sort where they run through a presentation. Put an index slide in there of uh, some recent customer feedback, some uh, reviews that they got, maybe even hyper localize it, somebody in their neighborhood. So when you're sitting down running your sales process, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, don't take my word for it that I'm going to deliver you the best customer experience out there. Here is exactly what some of your neighbors had to say about working with you. You know, something else to remember here is while you're incorporating feedback into your sales process, it's really important to explain the why behind the what, okay? The what is all this feedback that I have. The why is making sure we tell our prospects that we follow up with every customer because we genuinely value their opinions and want to know how to best serve them. All right. At the end of the day, customer feedback is the evidence that homeowners are looking for to determine whether or not your business is customer centric. All right. This is just a fun one right here. Um, and this has come up a lot during the, the COVID times. Look, we, it, now is a perfect opportunity to get a little old school. Start a direct mail campaign. For anybody looking for a cost-effective marketing tactic to increase, you know, just your global or just your general footprint, um, or maybe some social media or blog, like direct mails are a great solution for this. So send this out to homeowners with maybe recent project photos of, of you know uh, projects that you've tackled in their neighborhood. You know, tell the homeowner that you are uh, evaluating health and safety amongst all other things that you're taking X, Y, Z precautions, or maybe you're offering such and such discount, or you're trying to take, you know, some feedback that you got or review that you got, and you want to put it on a direct mail piece to promote that. Get creative. This is a really good solution working for a lot of people right now. Hey, Thank Gavin. You. Yeah. Okay. Ahead, Sorry, I, I was just going to say, say uh, um, I, love that, I love that idea. We do, we do um, in-house um, marketing, in -house marketing. For, uh, and, and proximity marketing for our customers. And the thing I love about that is that's a great idea. You know, we, we, we do every, all that in-house from start to finish. We create, we print, we store, we mail for our customers, provide the mail list where it's going. Um, but I never really looked at putting stuff like the review stuff on there. So I, I, I think that's an unbelievable ad that I'm going to get with my team about doing, because you're right. Everyone is home. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they are starting to they see, are starting see. Much, So I don't know about the rest of you guys, but you know, I've been stuck within these four walls for, I don't know how long now. Uh, this is the first time in many years I've been excited when the mail shows up. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just something new to look forward to, right? Like, People are checking it again. What we thought was a dead medium, it's coming back alive. So I'm glad you added that little additional insight. Thank you. Um, all right. So, hey, Gavin, hey, one more Gavin, question, one on, more that. question oh, on that. Fire away. So, when you talk about um, adding the reviewers or survey responses on there, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you guys actually have the ability to do something around uh, having like uh, safety surveys included in what. Is like what is done by Guild Quality, right? So we actually could talk about like safety and best practices on job sites in our kind of surveys, and then take that and put it out to the direct mail so that it's a little bit more like uh, updated with what's currently happening in the world, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, I'm going to speak about this in, in the context of, of Guild Quality. One of the things that we've offered our members right now, especially for some of our public facing avenues, is the ability for them to put out there what their general global stance is dealing with the COVID situation, so how they are addressing health needs. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people are taking advantage of us, just asking their homeowners, you know, uh, what are the issues that matter to them? And gathering all that uh, bits of information to help better suit their business. So we can also gather comments uh, from said homeowners 
um, at least from the guild quality side, and we can put together like direct mail pieces, uh, all tied in with uh, with guild quality too, where we can promote uh, testimonials of real homeowners saying these were the measures that they were, took, and this is one of the many reasons why I choose to go with them. So yeah, we can absolutely do all of that with it. Right, thank you. Seems right, be, thank you. This seems to be a nice little topic here. I'll, I'll take a look, another five, 10 seconds to see if anybody's got any questions uh, in the chat here about direct mail. All right, well, in that case, then I'm gonna keep on moving and more fun stuff. Key takeaways, what can you do right away to make an immediate impact, all right? We mentioned a lot of it, but I wanna, I wanna recycle it here. First of all, claim the, those company profiles out there on all the popular review sites. If you don't have access to the Google My Business page, go into Google and Google the terms Google My Business and then follow the steps there so that you can claim that page too. Uh, implement, and I know it says third party, but just, I'm biased to the third party approach, obviously, but implement some sort of process for gathering consistent feedback uh, during the job and, and take it a little bit further than the review. If you really want to understand your strengths and weaknesses uh, of your company and of your brand, it's great to have a whole lot of five star reviews out there. But if you can reiterate to a customer of why you have as many as you do and what you are particularly better at than everybody else, and that just goes so much further. And then lastly, the big point here, everybody, please start doing this. Take action. Thank their happy customers for their feedback and follow up with the unhappy customers in a professional manner. This sort of front facing version of just showing that you are customer centric and that you care about both the happy and unhappy customers goes such a long way when people are looking you guys up online. All right. The name of the game is closing deals. These are three simple free takeaways that you can implement today to help you close more deals. Okay, now, now the fun part, my, uh, my, my selfish little sandwich plug about what, what Guild Quality is all about. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what Guild Quality does. And essentially, we are a third party that follows up with customers uh, proactively, either after jobs are complete or often uh, ongoing. All right, so we will follow up with projects uh, b before final Final payment is there so we can help uh, from a third party perspective to be in front of problems. We also follow up with, you know, loss leads too. So we will talk to anybody that you want us to, to gather the feedback and the tools necessary uh, for you to measure what's working and not working within your process. All right. So our approach is pretty simple. We follow up with the customers. We put it in our password protected dashboard where all the results live and then share that to you and anybody else on your team. Now, on top of that, we will gather reviews that we can put on social media and, and all that sort of great stuff. Um, but the flow of information was really about learning first of, you know, if you want the true ROI, if you can get 10% better at something, how many more deals is that gonna lead to? So I mentioned the dynamic reporting tools, really big, uh, especially within this community here of uh, peer benchmarking. So you can see, how, uh, you know, whether you do roofing or windows or siding, you can actually run dynamic reports to how do I compare to other people doing roofing in the area? Or how do I compare to other people doing siding? How do I compare to people using James Hardy products in my area? So you know kind of where you stack within everything. Um, quarterly and monthly trends, just break it down over time frames. You wanna see it month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year, week over week. We can do that. And uh, one of the big things is, is measuring team performance too. Um, you know, especially if you've got a team of, you know, more than two or three individuals out there, having a, a software that actually ranks them not only on what their sales performance is, but on what their customer satisfaction performance is, is huge. Because, you know, you wanna win repeat business, you gotta have a great team out there. And it, in order to have a great team, you gotta know what they really excel at, all right? Uh, customizable feedback forms, anything you want us to ask, we will ask. And the ability to market it. So you want us to create a micro site for you and embed testimonials and reviews on your website. I already mentioned linking up to social media. Just two sides of a coin here, getting better and promoting yourself. Um, do want to thank our host James Hardy here too and talk a little bit about Guild Quality's relationship 
with James Hardy. Uh, so if you didn't know, there are free surveys via Guild Quality's partnership with James Hardy. So the, the details are right here in front of you. Elite, preferred, preferred rewards advantage members receive free surveys on jobs that are logged through the tracker. Rewards Plus rewards members, uh, they actually get a, a free trial of Guild Quality if they want to, where we'll survey up to 20 jobs, no strings attached, just to see, you know, again, you know, what, what's working, what's not. And if we can get a bunch of reviews out there, that doesn't hurt either. Uh, the feedback not only lives on the Guild Quality side of things and uh, all the social media, but we can push this feedback to the Hardy Locator page as well. And, and uh, uh, yeah, Cook. Yeah. 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 So that's important to note here that uh, as anybody attends uh, this webinar or any of the webinars that are being put together by James Hardy and Lansing, we actually have a promotion in place so that if you are not currently a James Hardy Cocktail Alliance program member, uh, by attending three of these webinars, we're going to give you free access to the Alliance program. So <clears throat> the uh, actual free trial period that Gavin mentioned on the previous slide is available to anybody that's attending these Lansing James Hardy webinars. And it's pretty easy to move up in the uh, Contra Alliance program as well if you want to be a full member. You just uh, work with your local Lansing rep or the party rep, we'll pull them together, likely. And they'll help you kind of build the path to uh, getting free access to go quality on a regular basis. Yep. Yep. No, thank you for that. Um, and then, yeah, the last thing here additional discounts, unlock tools like, you know, the loss lead surveying that I mentioned, those direct area mailers, all that sort of stuff under the Guild Quality umbrella. All right, um, look, here's my personal information. That is my cell phone. Yes, I'm putting my cell phone out there on a webinar that is being recorded to a bunch of strangers. But if anybody has questions, feel free to shoot me a text or uh, give me a call. Also, happy to put in touch with the right people if you're interested in maybe uh, kicking the tires with guilt quality. So um, I want to pause here for a little bit and just, you know, uh, fire away with any questions about, you know, what we can do to better control our online reputation or or on our reviews or some best practices. So I am all ears. Yep, so uh, the major question that I saw come through a couple of different times was uh, the difference between field quality service versus standard review service. We started to uh, edge on that a little bit. It, the difference between a standard review service uh, and guild quality is, is that what versus why sort of mentality. So. Guild Quality does gather reviews. We, we have the ability to publish it into social. We've got a Google review encouragement that I'm happy to like talk more about uh, potentially at a later time, but we don't stop there. Most review services gather reviews, post them out online, which is great to cast that wide net where Guild Quality really adds that extra little, you know, oomph, so to speak, is getting uh, beyond just the review. So I, I can't tell you the number of times that our members get five star reviews, but they might only get a, a, a one star when it comes to job site cleanliness. All right. So, you know, really you got a five star review, but if you left nails in somebody's backyard uh, and they told that to the third party and never told you that, do you really think that person's going to refer you to their friend and neighbor? Because people also tend to lead with the negative. You know, how was ABC contracting when they came over to your house? Oh, they were great. No, I absolutely love the project. Um, you know, uh, Timmy did uh, find some nails in the backyard and boom, all that credibility has been wiped out. So it's getting in front of those problems too. So reviews are awesome, but understanding what's working for you and what's maybe not working for you is where ROI comes into play. Great. So a follow-up question, uh, and it's funny, uh, this came up uh, in some work that we were doing together earlier today, Gavin. Is around you, you showed something uh, that kind of was a customer dashboard, or I'm sorry, a business owner dashboard to help them kind of look at their business. What do you guys do to help a user navigate that dashboard and then understand what uh, things they should be looking at, um, kind of tweaking, adjusting, or addressing inside of their business? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Guild Quality does provide um, unique dashboards where all the feedback lives. Um, again, this is a, a software first and foremost. Uh, with Guild Quality, whether you're a member or even if you're not a full paid member, you're just getting access to the surveys. Uh, our team is more than happy to walk anybody through uh, how to navigate through said dashboard. Actually, no, we're on a screen share and show everybody what it looks like. We're getting a little creative here, folks. Strap in. So, and uh, while we pull this up, um, again, 
navigate it through a couple of different means here. Um, obviously, there's different, you know, reports and things like that that we can pull. But essentially, we log in. And it looks like this. This is your world, uh, just where all of the information lives, everything coming in in real time. So you can see maybe some problem customers that need to be addressed right away versus those people that got that five star, as well as just a collection of all the data. So you get that high level. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? All right. Now, from here, you can obviously do some further manipulation and stuff like that. But keep in mind, this data is for your eyes and your eyes only. Uh, only the review and any other uh, tidbits that you want to live externally will. So it's a lot, uh, it's a very controlled environment in that case. And if anybody has questions, anybody at my team is more than happy to walk somebody through how the dashboard works. Great. Thank you so much. I don't have any other questions on my end. All right. All right, well, it looks like we have no more questions coming through. So I just wanna thank you, Gavin, for taking the time today to walk us through uh, the presentation. That was a lot of really good information inside of there. I know Kevin has some, some closing comments. I'll let Kevin jump in here and close us up. Well, thank you again, and to all of our customers again. Um, this is, uh, and this is valuable information. I just literally met uh, eight to 10 different customers today. Well, we about is that reputation management and, and do you have a star rating and if so like and you know does your star rating and you don't um, these are these are very different times that you know i love to kind of, kind of in this in um star rating as far as when we do the thing that we're going to add to um you said it we're starting to go with reputation and um the uh, app has uh kind of overcome um pearl the fact that uh, yeah. the online to other people so uh, but no thank you again really appreciate uh the partnership jay miles especially james hardy so thank you as are uh, you always have again and i'm very excited um for the opportunity look forward to uh uh, you know, if you're a customer's union, questions do not um, get hesitate. Don't hesitate to reach out to customer dot marketing. that comes to being a team, and we're happy to pursue uh, anyone. Uh, um, yeah, Jim, thank you, Kevin, thank you, and um, I hope everybody takes it. Great. Thank you so Great. much, Thank Kevin. You so much Thanks, Kevin. For Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you, everybody.